Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to IIT's Resilient Hour. My name is Amina Muhammad, and I'm happy to be your moderator for today. Alhamdulillah, right now it is approximately the 26th nights of Ramadan. This is the 26th day of Ramadan, and inshallah it'll be the 27th night. May Allah allow us to see these last 10 nights out and the end of the month with better iman than how we entered. Insha'Allah, tonight's uh, event will begin with Quran recitation by Qari Abdul Fatah Juhayda, who will be joining us shortly, insha'Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولله ملك السماوات والأرض والله على كل شيء قدير إن في خلق السماوات والأرض واختلاف الليل وال نهار لآيات لأولي الألباب الذين يذكرون الله قياما Thank <laughs> you. 
yuqliful miya فاستجاب لهم ربهم أني لا أضيع عمل عامل منكم صدق الله العظيم Thank you so much for that beautiful recitation. Inshallah, tonight the program will continue with a lecture by Dr. Ingrid Matson, who is no stranger to the IIT community, I'm sure. Um, but for those of you who don't know, Dr. Ingrid Matson is a professor of Islamic studies and an interfaith activist. She is the London, uh, the London and Windsor Community Chair in Islamic Studies at Huron University College at the University of Western Ontario. Dr. Indra Mountainson will be joining us, inshallah, shortly, and she'll be giving a lecture on being mindful of Allah. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Ingrid. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, sister? It's great to be joining you again and the uh, IIT community in this Ramadan. Alhamdulillah, I'm doing really well. It's always good to be, you know, in the month of Ramadan in community with one another and with the opportunity to learn from people like you. Alhamdulillah. Well, I'm so happy to be with you. Shall I begin? Yes, of course. The stage is yours. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Dear uh, sisters and brothers, it's wonderful to be here with you in these last days of Ramadan. SubhanAllah, it's just, we've just rushed through this month. SubhanAllah, it always seems that way, doesn't it? But uh, let's enjoy these, these last days. Let's uh, finish Ramadan strong, okay? We'll say that Ramadan strong will be our motto and not get tired and weak near the end, but stronger and stronger, inshallah, so we can... We can finish on a high note and, and bring what we learned and the good habits that we developed into the rest of the year, inshallah, ya Rab. So I'm just going to give a brief talk today and then we'll have a few minutes in case anyone has some comments they'd like to make or something they'd, they'd like to share or a question. And uh, the topic is is let's keep being mindful of Allah. So we know that we began this month with uh, reciting the verse of the Quran from Surah Al-Baqarah, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu kutiba alaykum asiyam kima kutiba alaladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattakum so that you may become mindful of Allah. This is one of the great mysteries of, of Ramadan and of fasting in Ramadan is that somehow by not eating every day during the month, we become more mindful of Allah. And from there, you know, from this very one narrow activity, something ripples out to greater and greater mindfulness and awareness of what's around us. So this is my theme um, as we um, that I want to just briefly cover. So what does it mean to be mindful of Allah? What it means is that you know, who you are, and what is your purpose according to Allah's divine plan. It means that you do not deny the reality that you are created by Allah for a purpose. Denial is what kufr really means. Kufr is denial, like pretending it's not there or saying, no, I won't believe that. So, so taqwa is the opposite. Taqwa is is knowing and paying attention to this reality. So what do we know? What is this reality of our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world, in this universe and cosmos that Allah created? First of all, it begins on the foundation of, a, of our spiritually sound nature. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ta created us good and spiritually sound. This is a fitrah. That Allah created us with. Think of it as a, as a, you know, think about how our, our, our muscles and our ligaments are on this frame of the skeleton. Think of fitra as our, as our spiritual, 
skeleton. So that's our shape. And that's there. That's our foundation spiritually. And then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us certain capacities. And if we, if Allah permits us to grow into those capacities, intellectual, emotional, then, God willing, we will reach a point where our reasoning, also our intellectual ability, is sound. And if we have that and we're emotionally healthy, then now we reach a, a new point in our journey. And this is our ability to make choices between what is right and wrong, to do that you know, fully informed. And having this, uh, being able to make these choices makes us also not only capable but responsible now we are responsible for those choices and this is our tech leaf we are morally accountable so here we are we've been born with this sound nature and at a certain point we reach the ability to make choices between right and wrong but although we've been born with a sound and healthy spiritual nature we have not been born in a sound and healthy world there's much that's good in this world but there's also much that's bad that's wrong that's dysfunctional that's unjust us unfair and twisted and this world can affect our sound nature it can tempt us can mislead us it can confuse us but our creator our lord has not left us alone but has given us guidance in the form of the quran and the sunnah and has given us teachers and family and community to help us uh, to transmit to us that revelation, that Quran and Sunnah, and to help us understand it. And also those who can give us advice and support so that we can really be stronger to work for what is right and work against what is wrong and to continually to develop ourselves so that we're capable of being courageous in taking action. This is what it means to be mindful of Allah, that we are awake, that we are on point, we're attentive, not mindless, inattentive, sleepwalking through life. So this Ramadan is shaking us up, is making us come awake, is making us sharpen up. Now we have that. Alhamdulillah, inshallah. And it's going to, to push us on to the next level as we come through the next year. Now, let's think about if we go back to this very simple practice of fasting, of not eating during the daylight hours, during, during Ramadan. How does that help us with this mindfulness? Well, first of all, you know, fasting is both fatiguing and clarifying. So we do get these tires of fatigue, sleepiness, you know, not being able to do everything sometimes. But we also it also makes us uh, mentally sharp in some ways. Um, we're starting to think and focus about on some things that maybe we don't think that much about. So first of all, we're fully aware of what we've eaten in any one day. Now, out, outside of Ramadan. If someone asked you at the end of the day to list every single thing you ate or drank in that day, could you do it? I think most of us would forget a few things if we didn't write them down, you know, as the day progressed because we're snacking here, we're grabbing something here, we're eating something and we're not really paying attention while we're eating. But I have no doubt that most of you could recall every drink and every bit of food that entered your mouth you know, in the past day, because you were fasting. And so each thing that comes in now is, is meaningful, right? And more than that, we're thinking about so many aspects of the food because of this daily cycle of fasting and breaking fast. We know, for example, we become more aware that we're completely reliant on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for any plant that we eat or animal that we eat and everything we have comes either from a plant or an animal. So for any of these things to live long enough to grow, to become food for us, right? because we can, we can plant crops, we can raise animals, but there could be droughts or floods or disease. All of these things can ruin the food supply. 
So we become grateful to Allah and we become, inshallah, we should become more appreciative of the bounty of the earth that Allah has given us and committed to taking better care of it for its sake and for our sake. You know, one of the things that people are talking about now, for example, is that our food supply may be threatened because uh, people are using so many pesticides for their lawn, on um, big commercial farms, that it's killing so many of the insects, the bees, all of the flying insects that pollinate the plants that they won't be growing anymore. This is a big threat. So subhanAllah, we, we cannot just snap our fingers and suddenly have food. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this world in a way that it, it, go, it everything is working together to br bring us this beautiful bounty. And so subhanAllah, we, need, we become aware as we become aware of the food that we need, we become aware of the need to, um, to also take care of this cycle. One second. Sorry, we, we do this every every year I come on since I'm happening. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Okay, so so this is the earth, but let's think about the next step. Let's think about there's not only these so-called natural disasters, but also all of the things that that block people from being able to access food because of injustice that human beings perpetrate, blockades, detention, wars. We see we see now in an active war in Ukraine. In Yemen, in other places, there are people who are starving. They can't access that food because of injustice. So this month, when we experience even a little of what it means to be hungry, um, it makes us think. You know, it makes us think in ways that we don't. I would say that most of us, the rest of the year, we think about it, but not at the same level, or at least we don't feel it as on the same level that we feel during Ramadan. You know, when we have a little bit of hunger. And we think, wow, subhanAllah, what would it feel like to really starve, right? What does it mean to really be starving? And so, inshallah, part of our mindfulness then, being mindful of this world that Allah created and our place and purpose in it, as we feel this hunger, this fasting is going to make us work more for justice and fight injustice after Ramadan, inshallah. And then... As we, as we eat, and sometimes because our, our uh, cycle of eating is, you know, the timing is off, and sometimes it can cause, you know, a little bit of maybe we get a little bit stomach upset or things aren't quite working the same way, maybe because the kind of things that we're eating, or we're not drinking enough water or, you know, the times of day, all of these things, it makes us think about our own bodies. SubhanAllah, this amazing creation that Allah gave us. And how, you know, this food, to take this food into our body, to let it be useful to us, we have to be able to chew, we have to be able to swallow, we have to be able to digest. And all of these functions in our body that Allah created us with that are so beautiful, these are too are under Allah's command. And while we're living, you know, we, we realize that we are so dependent on these functions to simply live and survive. So let's part of our mindfulness is to appreciate this trust, this amana that Allah has given us, and to, you know, as we go forth from Ramadan, to take care of this amana, to keep it functioning well, and do everything we can to really preserve this amazing gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. And then what else? All of this from food. What else do we eat from this, from this one thing, from eating and fasting, we become aware of this whole world around us. So one of the things that we become aware of is that we rely on other people, right? As I said before, we can't just snap our fingers and food appears. Where does it come from? How does it get from wherever it started to where it, where it ends up? I think that um, you know, most of the time we're not really paying much attention 
to who is getting the food to us. Now, in this pandemic, because of supply chain disruptions, because of other political events that have happened, there are supply chain disruptions. I don't know about you, but this is the first time in my life, in my life as an adult, that I've ever gone to a grocery store and seen some shelves empty. Um, and that's because they didn't get their shipment in. SubhanAllah, but still we're, we're very lucky. Allah has given us so much opportunity that even if that's the case in a store that one or two shelves is empty, uh, there's so many other things in, in the store. So we can't complain, but it should make us aware if we combine that with our fasting, our awareness now of where we are in this creation of Allah, it should make us more aware of how these things come to us. You know, sometimes we might watch, you know, one of those those British shows on TV and they show um, rich people sitting at the table and they're eat, all eating this nice meal. And there's a bunch of servants standing around the room, just standing there and they don't get to eat while everyone else is eating. Well, most of us, uh, I think most of us don't have servants in our home, but what's replaced it really are is a whole network of people um, who are bringing the food to us. They're not in our home bringing it to our table necessarily, but they're out there. They're the farmers who are growing it. They're the migrant workers who are picking it and who are not paid very well and who come from Jamaica or from Mexico or for other countries and they have to stay on the farm and stay in this little, you know, some little poor housing that is supplied for them and they're picking, picking the food, right? And then think about the the people then, the truck drivers who are shipping it. And then in the grocery store, those who are putting the food on the shelves and those cashiers. And, you know, if we think some of those um, characters on TV are arrogant, the way they treat the servants who put the food in front of them, have we looked, I don't know about you, but I've, I've seen some pretty arrogant behavior by people in grocery stores. When some, you know, poor, you know, hardworking person behind the cash register is just trying to do their job and someone there is, you know, very arrogantly demanding, you know, that they do things differently or why are they doing this or that or they're getting very frustrated. SubhanAllah, you know, we just don't appreciate all of the people who make it possible for us to even have that food that's brought in our home. And then, of course, in our home, I think for many of us, there are there's one person or maybe more than one who is doing most of the preparation. And on many days, we might just, you know, be busy studying, doing some things. And then we're called to the table and we're like, oh, oh, this looks good. And we eat it. But in Ramadan, we're standing there looking over their shoulder as they're at the at the stove because we're we're hungry and we want to say oh what are they making for us so i think it, it also allows us to really appreciate that person who's cooking for us and gratitude subhanallah gratitude is the is the attitude of the believer gratitude is the attitude of the believer and so in ramadan we learn to be more grateful you know we get in that practice that habit of being more grateful to, for the person who's who in our home or in our community or in our our masajid wherever it is where they're feeding us we're more grateful so let's keep that because that is part of the taqwa that is is really elevated during ramadan right and then and then our awareness should also extend to the very act of eating and drinking you know in during normal times, you know, we might really look forward to a meal or, you know, taste something and just like, oh, this is so different. This is so good. I really appreciate this. But we get, you know, and this is what how human beings are. We get used to what we have and we don't really appreciate it any, anymore. Think about the story of Bani Israel. And there they are. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has freed them from slavery, from Pharaoh, and Allah is giving them all sorts of food and 
then it was sort of they're complaining, oh, we're bored of this food. Can you send us something else, you know, from the heaven? How many times do we say, oh, I'm bored, I'm bored of this food, I'm bored of eating this? But subhanAllah, in Ramadan, we 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 eat one date and drink a glass of water, and that is just that is a banquet. After a day of fasting, one date and a glass of water is is just a banquet for us. So we need to keep that spirit and um, to appreciate and also enjoy because one of the beautiful things is that, yes, you know, there are many serious things we have to deal with and tough things and difficult things. And, um, you know, we're struggling to do the right thing. And sometimes we see a lot of sad things, but that means that we also being aware of where we are in a relationship of Allah, of having taqwa is also enjoying what Allah has has permitted us to enjoy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has permitted us to enjoy, you know, good food and good drink and halal and tayyib food and drink in moderation. So let's be joyful. Let's take that, you know, that nice cup of tea or coffee that we enjoy in the morning and uh, in Ramadan, we especially think, oh, I have to have this coffee or tea. But let's keep that spirit of, oh, I'm really enjoying this. I'm really, I, I have to say that, that you know, Ramadan, I feel that Ramadan really makes me appreciate waking up in the morning, not in the early, not before Fajr, but waking up, you know, in a normal time and being able to get up and have that coffee or tea you know to start my day which we can't i can't do in ramadan i think oh, alhamdulillah this is really amazing so so part of this taqwa is also having joy and really appreciating what we have so this is this is a month of taqwa this is a month of awareness of mindfulness of allah and not only of allah but all that allah gave us and our purpose with respect to what allah gave us and it just starts with food, you know, but then it goes on and on. I mean, we can think about, we look around and we see every day we hear about another organization, another good project, another good initiative that our brothers and sisters are working for, you know, hardworking, self-sacrificing, talented people trying to right wrongs and, and do, you know, things that are good for those who are in need. And I know, you know, sometimes we get frustrated with each other and, um, you know, that's that's true in any community and any family and any group. There are going to be times when we're just really annoying each other. But let's appreciate this. I mean, subhanAllah, it's there are a lot of neat, you know, problems in the world. There are a lot of needs. There are a lot of things that can make us feel sad and overwhelmed. But let's also look at all of the good that's being done it is it is really really beautiful to see mashallah and i always feel so proud of the muslim community especially in this month when i see the generosity and the hard work so let's let's keep that let's keep that being um grateful to the community and the believers and also have mercy for on them uh, and each other for our failings and shortcomings and and finally you know, there's so much more to say, but finally, let me just say a word about the Quran recitation that we're listening to this month, like the beautiful recitation that we started this program with. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of those who are standing up this month and are leading those in prayer, whether that's in our homes, whether that's in the Masajid and the Islamic centers. And, I, and, and how much we enjoy the beautiful recitation you know, let's remember how much work it took for people to get to that point where they're able to stand up and do that for us. How many hours of study, how many years of study um, did they put in to being able to do that? And let's, so let's really respect that. Let's respect that discipline. Let's respect that effort. And also when the imams of our community and the leaders and the, the Islamic studies teachers and principals, when they come forward and they say, you know what, to serve the community better, I need to learn a little more. I need some more training. I don't really know how to do this. Let's, let's help them do that because we see that these are people who, are, who will undertake an initiative seriously. They want to do the right thing 
And so let's support them in doing that because we are reaping the benefits of their um, studious nature, of their hard work, of their dedication to learning this religion. So this is part of our, our mindfulness too, is that realizing that Yes, we can read the Quran ourselves and recite it for ourselves maybe, but to have this skill and ability to take Allah's word and recite it so beautifully and not just alone, but in a congregation. And there's some, you know, there's some nervousness and, and stress that every Imam feels or every Qadi feels when they stand up and do that. Let's really uh, appreciate that as well and continue to appreciate them not only in the Ramadan, but the rest of the year as we appreciate each other. So I hope you um, accept this, this short reminder, brothers and sisters, I ask for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you and your families, to bless this beautiful uh, community of learning and worship, and that you pray for me and my family as well in this month of Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah khairan, Dr. Matson, for that really beautiful reminder. Thank you so much for joining us today. I actually have a question if you, I know we have a couple of minutes with you. Yeah, um, sure. I think all of your reminders are really beautiful. And I think one of the things that uh, is occurring to me is that it's Wednesday now, and this might be perhaps the very last week that we get to experience in the month of Ramadan. And one of the really beautiful things <clears throat> about the month, sorry, I'm recovering from a cold. Mm, um, so Mm -hmm. One of the, the beautiful things about the month is that we get um, reflections from, you know, uh, people of knowledge, just like yourself, and we get to come together. And it's a very daily occurrence. There's every part of our day that is kind of focused on, if not remembrance, there are people around us who are encouraging us in that direction. And so as we move forward, so come Monday or next Wednesday or next Friday or in the following months afterwards, do you have any tips on how we can take some of these mindfulness habits into our kind of regular every? Day lives? Yeah. Well, so mashallah, that's a really good question. I think, um, you know, uh, first of all, we've developed the habit and we, we try to keep nurturing those habits. But Ramadan is is a different month. I mean, it's it's the special time, right? And so we're going to be doing things differently. Now, if there are other times during the year when we can fast occasionally Mondays and Thursdays or middle of the month, that will kind of help refresh perhaps some of these ideas, not only habits of body, but habits of the soul and habits of the mind it will, will remind us about the things that we learned. Um, it's also the case that in, in our communities, yes, you know, in many communities, there's something every day that would be difficult to sustain all year because we have other commitments for study and work and, you know, seeing our, our visiting family and neighbors and other things. But perhaps, you know, once a week, maybe once a month. I think the key is to have it, to have something that's on the calendar that's regular um, and, you um, and try to, you know, if it's on the calendar, okay, you know, once a month, I'm going to go to this kind of program or once a week, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to go to the masjid, I'm going to listen to a lecture. Um, I think that really helps us because when, um, you know, we may have a good intention, but unless we kind of structure something into our life, uh, it's very easy for the time to pass. And we simply, you know, suddenly we realize, oh, it's been months since Ramadan ended and I, I've somehow along the way, um, whatever I said I was going to do is, is gone now. And, and this is from, this is human nature. This is not a bad thing. It's just, I mean, there's so many studies on it about people who make new year's resolutions. You know, we have Ramadan post <laughs> end of Ramadan resolutions. Other people have new year's resolutions. And um, yeah, you'll find there's a lot of tips from psychologists and social psychologists on how to how to make a resolution and then keep a resolution that that might stick. I think I'll be taking some of those habits. <laughs> so I'm like, um, uh, Dr. Madison, it's uh, Farid. I just want to uh, say very uh, we're very grateful, obviously, to have you once again with us. Uh, I certainly enjoyed uh, the chat, and it's good to also see Sister Amina. We haven't seen her in a while. She's been overseas uh, studying. so it's Oh, good mashallah. Mashallah, that's great. It, 
it's great to yeah. see both of you. And um, I love the hashtag Ramadan Strong moniker. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I think we'll adopt that at IIT. It's a good it's a good reminder of, of how we should end this month uh, because, as you know, as we get towards the end of the month, we sometimes tend to drag ourselves because, especially in the last ten nights with Kiam and everything else, uh, you get a bit tired. And uh, so that that motivation from you is is always uh, helpful and is, and inspiring. So thank you very much. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Or sometimes we start we start shopping for Eid in, uh, in the last few days <laughs> instead of instead of really. <laughs> so so don't get don't don't waste you know the last days of Ramadan spending it just just getting a lot of stuff for Eid. You can plan for Eid, but but don't go overboard. It's not I Eid yet. Agree. <laughs> I I agree, and that's really good advice. And I also I mean I I think. Um, I'm also grateful for your reflection on some of the frontline workers and how resilient uh, they have been uh, during the last couple of years. And I think, as you mentioned, very often we tend to take these things for granted, especially the, the grocery, grocery clerk and the, the bus drivers and the truck drivers and the people who move products from one destination to the next to get us food and fuel and all that sort of stuff. And uh, those are sometimes considered to be the lowest in the socioeconomic rung when perhaps they should be higher up and they should be paid more and be valued more because in, in many respects, they are the lifeline of, 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 uh, of community um, engagement and community supply. So th those were also a uh, good reflection and reminder to all of us. Yeah. And I, I have to say, you know, especially during the times when we were so locked down, sometimes the only people I had any social interaction with for months other than in my in my home, were with people who were working in the grocery stores, yes. and I really appreciated their, you know, their friendly face, their kind words, and and yeah, I think they, you know, they made a difference. Not just what they did, but even their presence for so many people. Yeah, I mean, they uh, they work so we can stay home, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I and and I think uh, you know it doesn't hurt if we were to say a word of thank you or. Uh, perhaps take them a gift the next time you go to the grocery store and tell them what a wonderful job they're doing. I mean, I have my favorite cashiers that I deal with <laughs> on a Saturday morning at seven o'clock and I do try my best to engage them from time to time. So, Yeah, mashallah. So once yeah. again, thank you. I, Sister Amina, I don't know if, you've had, if you have any more questions. I know uh, Dr. Madison may have to run at about eight o'clock, I thought, but if you have any further questions, um, by all means, go ahead. No, alhamdulillah, I think it's, it's it's good to end it on a high note. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks. And uh, uh, I, I pray that the last few days of Ramadan are really wonderful, um, great and blessed times for all of you. Thank you for, for inviting me. I'll see you next year, inshallah. Inshallah. Mm -hmm. inshallah. Until next time. And Sister Amina, before you go, how have you been? How is, uh, how is Ramadan in the Netherlands? Alhamdulillah, it's good. It's a little... Uh, the, the khutbas are in Dutch, so I couldn't give you really any specifics, but <laughs> I will say, alhamdulillah, it's really good to be home. And uh, how much longer do you need to be there to complete your studies? Uh, I'm there, inshallah, until about the end of the summer. So you might see me maybe around September, potentially. Okay. Okay, okay well, it's good to have you back. I mean, many of our audience know that uh, I, consider you, I consider you to be partially a product of IIT, and uh, I think we've had some... Uh, some uh, contribution to the person you have become. And uh, we really feel uh, privileged when we see people like you and others, uh, young people who have actually taken on the cause and are um, not only um, getting yourself educated uh, in, in a particular profession, but you've also uh, remained dedicated to your faith. And for young people, I know how much a challenge it is, especially for identifiable uh, Muslims like yourself. And I know in, in Europe in particular, uh, many countries um, are inclusive of Islam and, and what we stand for, but there are many other countries that are not so inclusive. So it's always a challenge. And uh, and I, I do uh, I do want to thank you and, and, you know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to, to guide and bless you and continue to uh, enable you to be a benefit to our community, inshallah. I will say I do talk about IIT whenever I go to another masjid. The expectations that I have, I realize, are, are pretty high because of what's been offered to me at the masjid. And I couldn't be more grateful for my time with you guys. Thank you. Thanks.
Okay, brothers and sisters, I just want to, in, in the last few minutes we have, uh, to come on and say thank you. Uh, this has been a challenging uh, few years. Um, Alhamdulillah, uh, we were able to provide you with a number of in-person programs uh, during this blessed month of Ramadan. And we, I want to thank you on, on behalf of the entire board of directors and all of the IIT volunteers for the tremendous support you've provided to us over the last uh, over the last. 29, 20, 20, 29, 27, 28 days in, in Ramadan so far, and also prior to that, uh, during the uh, during the pandemic, uh, your support has been really instrumental in ensuring that we continue to provide you with the, uh, with, the with the support that you deserve. I also want to, want to once again welcome all of our listeners who are who are um, joining us uh, from from overseas. It is great to uh, to see so many of you, and you've been persistent. Uh, you've been with us uh, throughout the uh, throughout the month of blessed month of Ramadan, and I hope Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, continue uh, to bless you, my beloved brothers and sisters. Um, I just want to spend a few minutes to tell you what to expect at the Islamic Institute of Toronto over the next couple of days. As you know, uh, we have uh, begun uh, Qiyam. Uh, they started on the 21st night and will continue until the 29th night. Uh, our KM starts at 2.30 and goes until uh, 3.30, inshallah. I also want to let you know that tonight, inshallah, we will be having a special program, uh, a program to uh, provide you with information on what's happening at the IIT, what are some of the plans uh, from our program perspective, but also uh, ponder and reflect a bit about where we can as an institution go in terms of our physical uh, space. I also want to, to let you know, my dear brothers and sisters, and on Saturday night, we will be having the Qatam al-Quran. As you know, uh, because we are reading and praying eight rakah of Tarawih rather than 20, as we normally would, uh, it has taken us a bit longer to complete the recitation of the Quran. But Alhamdulillah, I want once again to thank our, our Quraz and our, and our Shuyukh who have participated in the recitation of the Quran. And I'm very pleased to let you know that, inshallah, we will be able to complete the recitation of the Quran on Saturday night. So if you're able, I would encourage you to please join us on Saturday night for the uh, Qatam al-Quran as well as the dua. Brothers and sisters, I would be remiss if I don't remind you that our One in 1000 campaign is still ongoing. And uh, Alhamdulillah, you know, we have, we're above the $100,000 uh, mark, but we have quite a ways to go to get to our target of 300000 But I'm not panicking. I have complete, faith, complete uh, confidence in our community and our ability to raise the $300,000. I know we have in the past reached our target, and inshallah, with your support, with the guidance and help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I have no doubt but inshallah, we will be able to raise our target of 300,000. And you can participate by being one in 1,000 to donate $300 each. And even if you have donated, if you're able to make a second or a third or a fourth contribution of $300, uh, please note that we will welcome your, uh, your donation. And also spread the word around to your friends and family uh, who you might know, and uh, inshallah, encourage them to support us at the Islamic Institute of Toronto. As I mentioned earlier, we are extremely grateful. Words really uh, doesn't, uh, cannot describe how grateful we are for the kind of support we've received from our community over the last number of years. Time and time again, you've come through, you've supported us, and I'm sure this time, brothers and sisters, you will ensure that uh, we are able to once again uh, meet our target. And there are various ways of donating. You can go to our, to our website, islam.ca backslash donate. You can call us at 416-335-9173. You can give me a call at uh, 647-963-8757. You can donate via credit card. You can do an e-transfer. If you're not able to donate the $300 in one lump sum, we encourage you, you can do it in installment over a number of, of months. Uh, subject to your um, your economic um, abilities, so no one uh, and no small or a donation is too small. Uh, this institution, I've said it over and over again, was built on contributions from working class people who give and then give and then give some more. 
So brothers and sisters, if it is a $5, a $10, $100, if you're able to donate, please make a donation to the Islamic Institute of Toronto. I also want to let you know that we are collecting fidya and fitra. Um, and in, in anticipation of receiving fitra and fidya, what we do from, from time to time is that we pre-distribute some of these funds to deserving institutions who are involved in activities related to the beneficiaries of FIDIA and FITRA. Uh, but we encourage you strongly to please make your FITRA donation well in advance of the Eid prayers so that we can ensure that this money gets to those individuals who deserve that uh, those money. And again, if you're not fasting um, and uh, you would like to provide us with your FIDIA, again, we would welcome that and we will ensure that it gets in, into the hands of those individuals who uh, deserve uh, that, that uh, support. Uh, the FIDYA is $10 per person, and the FITRA is $10 per person for everyone who lives in your household. As Dr. Ingrid Matheson said, brothers and sisters, it is as if we uh, started Ramadan a few days ago, and here we are at the end of this uh, blessed month. Uh, and I say that because uh, we have begun to plan for Eid at the Islamic Institute of Toronto. Um, our first option is to pray outside. That is the position that we are taking as of today. But of course, we will be monitoring the weather. And if the weather uh, changes, and if for any reason we cannot pray outside, then we will bring the prayer inside. Um, and in that respect, uh, more details will be uh, forthcoming. But inshallah, we are planning to have the prayers outside starting at 9 o'clock. The Khatib is uh, Sheikh Ahmad Kuti. But as I mentioned um, earlier, if we uh, cannot, for whatever reason, uh, and whether it's perhaps the most uh, significant uh, reason, if you're not able to pray outside, we will be having our prayers indoors. And in that case, we may have more than one prayers. So I encourage you to please stay tuned. Uh, visit our website, islam.ca, on an ongoing basis. Subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel. Subscribe to our newsletter so you can be the recipient of information on an ongoing basis. And, uh, and you can be uh, informed of what our plans are for, uh, for Salatul Eid. So once again, uh, my dear brothers and sisters, I just want to thank you for all your, all your support during this blessed month of Ramadan. Let me take this opportunity uh, to wish you and your family Eid Mubarak. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bless you and your families. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to be able to uh, become better Muslims and make that resolve uh, to become better after this month uh, is, is over. Uh, amongst uh, In our community, there are many individuals who are sick. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant them shifa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them a speedy recovery if it is good for them. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for them and their family. And all our brothers and sisters who have passed away, we also uh, are reminding and asking you to remind, uh, remember them in your du'as. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them and forgive them and to grant them a place in Janatul Firdaus. So once again, my respected brothers and sisters, let me take this opportunity to thank you very much for being part of the Islamic Institute of Toronto. We know you had lots of choices, but you've chosen uh, to listen to us. You've chosen to attend uh, prayers at the IIT. Those of you who are not able and who are not physically able to be with us are listening uh, through uh, our live stream. Um, and are still connected to the Islamic Institute of Toronto. So I, I would strongly encourage you to stay connected to the IIT outside of Ramadan. And uh, please, if you're able, benefit from, our, from, our, from one of our many programs. Of course, we are hoping, inshallah, to have our regular semester and in-person program commence sometime in the, in the summer. We are also looking forward to perhaps uh, uh, reconvening our summer camp. Uh, we do this. It's an annual annual activity for our youngsters. So again, I'd encourage you to check our website for ongoing update on this and other and, and other initiatives. Of course, nothing is predictable based on what's happening with the pandemic, but we are hoping, inshallah, that we will be able to provide you with the many programs that you have been accustomed to in person. And for those of you who are living outside of the GTA, of course, uh, join us. Continue to join us uh, through our live link and our YouTube channel. So once again, Jazakumullah Khair, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi Ta'ala wa Barakatuh. The time for Maghrib prayer is about a minute away in Toronto. 
if you are listening from other parts of uh, the city or outside of the city, please observe the local uh, sunset time in your area. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashadu an Muhammad. محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله